Hey guys, we are on day 213 in our Bible reading plan, and today we're reading in the book of Isaiah, chapter 64 through 66. So we're finishing out the book of Isaiah today, and we're going to continue to see this pattern of judgment and hope, judgment and hope, as we have throughout the entire book. So chapter 64, it starts with a prayer of repentance of God's people. It starts with a cry for God to come down from the heavens and to be with his people and to no longer be angry with them. And then in chapter 65, we're going to read the Lord's reply to that. Verse 2 says, All day long I've held out my hands to an obstinate people. And it goes on to describe all of the ways that they have shown themselves to be obstinate. And yet, the Lord says, He will not destroy them all. For those who follow Him and who seek Him, He will not destroy them. He will care for them. He will preserve their lives. And that one day, their past struggles will be forgotten. And we read here that in God's coming kingdom, in the new kingdom, the wicked will not inherit God's blessing, but that faithful remnant will still inherit that blessing. And He says, See, I will create a new heaven and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. The Lord will once again delight in His people, and He will bless them with long life. He's going to bless the work of their hands. We read that he's going to bless their children. And so we get this sense that in this new heaven and earth that is coming, life is is going to be blessed abundantly. The people are going to have long life. We see sort of a reversal of the original curse from the Garden of Eden, where Adam and Eve sinned for the first time, and the penalty was that God would curse the ground, that their hands worked, that they would toil and labor, that there would be a painful delivery for Eve, that he took away their long life span. And so here we see sort of in this new heaven and earth, all things are going to be recreated and remade, and God is going to bestow those blessings once again on his people, on humanity. And then we're going to read in chapter 66 that the wicked are still going to be excluded from this kingdom. But not only will the wicked be excluded and God's faithful remnant be included, God is going to extend this new heaven and earth, this new covenant family to all the nations. Anyone who would follow him will be blessed and included in this new covenant, in this new kingdom, in the new heaven and earth. And so the book of Isaiah ends with this beautiful picture of hope, the hope that we still have to look forward to the hope that God's people as they came out of exile had to look forward to that God was going to be doing this new thing, that he is going to bring a new heaven and a new earth where death is no more, where all of these things that have been made wrong by humanity, by our choices, is going to be made right once again. And it's something that we still have to look forward to today is this new kingdom that God is bringing into this earth. And Jesus invites us to participate in that kingdom as his followers. One of the things that really stood out to me as I was reading was that in chapter 66, verse 4, God says, For when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, no one listened. They did evil in my sight and chose what displeases me. But the Lord says later in that same chapter, he says that he will set a sign among them. He will send some of those who survive to the nations. And he says, To the distant lands that have not heard of my fame or seen my glory, they will proclaim my glory to the nations, and they will bring all your people from all nations to my holy mountain. And just this picture that Israel had forgotten who they were, God's people had forgotten who they were, they forgot the call to be a light to the nations, to show God's love, his glory, his power, his sovereignty in the whole earth to every nation around them. And the Lord called them back. He gave them multiple chances over and over and over again. He sent prophet after prophet with message after message, calling them to repentance before the day of judgment was coming to them, before the Lord removed his favor from them and they experienced this difficult time. But he's promised that they will forget these days, that these days will be long forgotten, that he is doing something new, he's bringing something new, and they will once again be that light that they were meant to be. His people will once again, those who are faithful, who choose to follow him, they will once again be that light to the nations that they were meant to be. He is writing all things and he is working all of those things together so that they will once again proclaim his glory to all nations and not only them, but so that everyone who believes would once again proclaim his glory 
to all nations. And that is still the call to us today, that even as we are waiting for the fullness of his kingdom to come in this earth, that we as believers, as Christ followers, as believers of Yahweh, we would also proclaim to all the nations. We would also be those light bearers that would shine the glory of God in this earth as we endeavor to follow him. It's so encouraging to me to read that we have a God who is the same God at the very beginning in the book of Genesis. He's still the same God that Isaiah is talking about here. And he is still the same God today that we read in all of these pages, still calling us to that same mission, still a merciful, steadfast, patient, loving God who is quick to mercy and slow to anger, working all things together for the good of humanity and for the good of those who love him. I hope that encourages you today. I'd love to read what stood out to you, what God's speaking to you through this reading. So go ahead, drop a comment in the Bible app, and let's share what God is doing in our lives today. Have a great day, guys.